Man, I swear it seems like every day that passes by leading up to this next chapter of Dragon Ball Super, we're learning something new and honestly pretty surprising in my opinion. This continues today, however, by the time you're seeing this video, it's probably been a decent amount of hours. Within days of the full release of Dragon Ball Super Chapter 65, we were given a brief summary of the events to expect as well as a few pre-draft images from a few panels. Really quick before we go any further, I want to give my usual spoiler alert for those of you that would appreciate that because this is actually even more shocking than what we've already learned in my opinion, so if you'd like to click off for now or at least watch the first spoiler video then feel free to do so. That video will be linked up at the top as well. Now for those of you who have been keeping up with everything that's been leaked over the past few days, you know that we've learned that after the conclusion of last month's chapter, Goku seemed to be the very clear victor in a final battle with Moro after perfecting Ultra Instinct and going just absolutely crazy for all of us to watch in amazement. He even brought out some pretty cool techniques as well. However, by the end of the chapter, Moro was left clinging to life after being nearly burned to death and crushed under a boulder begging for mercy from Goku. This to most of us seemed like the end of an arc, but Goku had different things in mind. Due to, I don't know, maybe his own selfishness or possibly having something totally different going on in his head, Goku elects to battle Moro from that moment forth as a human. What he does next is appear next to Krillin who's still spectating all of this mind you, but he has arrived safely and Goku takes the sensu beans from him. In a matter of seconds, Goku repeats his most controversial decision ever, or at least one of the many, in reference to when he gave Cell a sensu bean also before his battle with Gohan, and he tosses a sensu bean to Moro. He tells him to eat it in order to restore himself to maximum power, and after this, he must turn himself back into the Galactic Patrol. Moro is hesitant at first, but being that he is clinging to life and has no hope of beating Ultra Instinct as weakened as he is, he takes him up on his offer. As Moro gets back to his feet and regains full strength, I think we all probably facepalmed at the same time when we saw him, of course, power back up and lunge at Goku to try to destroy him one last time, to which Goku doesn't even budge and that, along with the entire summary, is where we thought the leaks would probably stop. However, once again, courtesy of, of course, DBS Hype over on Twitter once again, be sure to go give them a follow, we've learned even more about the consequences of another controversial decision by Goku. As always, a link to the original spoiler tweet as well as DBS Hype's Twitter will be down below in the description box, so be sure to go check that out if you're interested. Also, if you've been enjoying all of the Dragon Ball content so far, consider leaving a like on this video and if you haven't already, be sure to have those notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon down below to never miss future Dragon Ball and other anime updates like this. Don't forget to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all anime related content guys, but without further ado. So yesterday or two days ago, depending on when this is going up, I guess. I did a lot of talking about different scenarios that I think the Moro Saga could wrap up and possibly even segue into another arc pretty seamlessly and for the most part, I thought they were relatively realistic. Well today I learned maybe I don't think enough outside of the box as the leaks from Dragon Ball Super Chapter 65 get more interesting by the minute guys I promise you. Now in the very first panel, the first thing I noticed right away is that Moro is standing up fully healed and kind of looking at his hands and things like that, probably admiring the regenerative abilities of the sensu beans at this time, I would assume that maybe this is before he charges at Goku in the pre-drafts that we saw from the other day, otherwise maybe Goku just simply dodged his first attack which wasn't at full power for Moro and this could be right after that. The absolute worst case scenario I would consider is that Maybe Goku's counterattack, if all of this is directly cohesive to what we saw in the pre-drafts, but maybe it is in an order, I, I don't know how this stuff comes out, but maybe his counterattack just didn't do much tomorrow, which that's probably the least likely possibility. Going back to the newest spoilers though, as the rest of the panel is revealed, we see that Moro being restored to full power may not have been the smartest thing after all, as the crystals in his hands seem to be restored as well, and these are the very crystals he used previously to steal everyone's abilities by grabbing them by the neck. When we get a look at the palm of his left hand, Moro somehow holds the face of none other than Mirus, the erased angel slash galactic patroller, and when he places the crystal on his hand to the crystal on his forehead, the merging of powers between angel and pretty much demon is complete. 
When I saw this, I'm gonna be honest, my jaw kinda dropped. Everything I suggested as scenarios yesterday seemed to be very off, at least for the time being, as Moro has gained access to divine powers himself now. This might be a little confusing for some asking how on earth does Moro have Miris' powers and I had to think about it a little bit myself, but if we go back a few months to Dragon Ball Super Chapter 63, it begins to make a bit more sense. When Beerus and Whis first arrived on Earth, we don't learn until shortly after that they in fact brought Miris with them as well. However, he slipped off without them noticing after they managed to get the injured Z Fighters over to Dende. Miris, of course, is using this opportunity to head to the battlefield himself and he begins to fight Moro one on one. At first, things look pretty evenly matched as the two go back and forth, however, even Moro knows something is up with Miris, noticing that he seems to be hiding a considerable amount of strength. As Miris starts to fade away as the battle goes on, Goku cuts in but is easily dealt with by Moro even in Ultra Instinct. As the two begin to discuss what Goku has to do in order to take that last leap into divine power mastering Ultra Instinct, Moro's hand appears through the ground behind Miris and he's able to grab him by the neck. And I think this may have gone unnoticed or at least overlooked by a lot of people until now. And although Miris was immediately able to slice off Moro's hand, that doesn't really seem to matter. Now right away you're probably wondering like why didn't Moro use those powers immediately after grabbing Miris' neck right there and although we don't have a clear answer at this second and possibly never will, Miris did begin to use his full strength right away after that, pinning Moro to the ground and then he went on to shatter all of the crystals in Moro's hands. Now that Moro's been restored to full power by Goku's sensu beans, it seems that he somehow retained his most recent powers he was able to steal. Even with Goku in a fully mastered form of Ultra Instinct, you still have to be frightened to think about what someone like Moro could do with the power of the angels as this was a pretty surprising development that I honestly didn't expect and if it really goes down like this then this arc really has been an interesting ride. With Moro having stolen divine power, the first thing that I kinda wondered and this would be so cool if this happened is if the Grand Priest somehow has to get involved now, or at least Beerus and Whis, if he does possess all of Miris' abilities in their entirety, and just how does Angel Moro, if you want to call him that I guess, compare to Master Ultra Instinct Goku, pretty much a god in his own right? Down below in the comments, let me know your thoughts on these most recent spoilers for Dragon Ball Super Chapter 65, which should be dropping in a few days, and man, I don't know if we can handle any more spoilers like this honestly. Once again, I want to give a huge thanks and shout out to DBS Hype over on Twitter for always providing things like this for the community, so be sure to go give them a follow. The link to their Twitter as well as all of the spoiler tweets so far guys will be down below. Angel Moro guys, I feel like if I would have said that in my video the other day you guys would have roasted me, but I mean I guess anything is possible in Dragon Ball and that's honestly why we love it. Down below in the comments, be sure to leave your guys' thoughts and predictions for the rest of the arc. I just love seeing how creative you guys are, and it makes me feel a little bit less crazy too, so. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks so, so much for watching if you made it this far. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Have a great, great day, and I guess I'll see you all really soon for Dragon Ball Super Chapter 65.